Many of you would agree with the statement. Fish like the bottom deeper and flatter. Man also looks for what is better. This rule applies not only to people, but also to the planets. Some of them are absolutely dead and deserted, while others have necessary potential for the origin of life. For example, our hospitable Earth. What determines the chances of any planet to become comfortable for the development of intelligent and highly organized forms of life? Will we ever learn about the existence of alien life? Or it simply does not and cannot exist? Was the origin of life on Earth the result of a chain of unique accidents that are unlikely to be repeated on another planet? Does any specific place matter for the origin of life in space? Let's try to figure it out today. Why various planets have so different conditions? The surface of some planets is hot and saturated with poisonous vapors. The other ones are so cold that any living being would instantly turn into ice there. Obviously, in addition to the composition of the planet, it also depends on the location of the planet in the galaxy relative to the stars, as well as the stars that are near the planet. The area of space where the planets can be potentially habitable is called the habitable zone, or it is sometimes referred to by another name, the Goldilocks zone. The fairy tale tells us about the girl who had to use objects one by one and only single object of each set was usable. The rest turned out to be either too big or small, hard or soft, and only something in between fit perfectly. Haven't you understood how a fairy tale could be related to the possibility of the origin of life on different planets? It has a direct relation. After all, each planet can have only one perfect place, not too far from the star but at the same time not too close. What are other factors that affect the planets? Let's try to figure it out. Some scholars believe that planets located in special regions of large galaxies may be the most suitable for life. These areas are called galactic habitable zones. We will talk about them today. What constitutes such a zone and what mandatory conditions does it imply? The concept of a galactic habitable zone has been criticized more than once due to the inability of scientists to fully assess the factors that turn individual places of the macrocosm into potential oases of life. Besides, some stars often have unstable orbits over long periods of time, which periodically causes shifting of the habitable zones. Nevertheless, such locations in space do exist, and we live in one of them. Many scientists such as Harlow Shapley, Jim Clark, Wallace Tucker, as well as many other astrophysicists, paleontologists, biologists and astronomers worked on the development of the theory of a galactic habitable zone at different times. What factors contribute to the emergence of acceptable conditions in certain regions of the galaxy? The most important, as we have said before, is the location next to the correct star at the correct distance. In other words, the planet should be located not too close so that the star doesn't burn out the surface with excessive radiation, as it happens, for example, with Mercury. The nearby sun prevents the planet from forming a dense atmosphere, and at the daytime the surface heats up to almost 800 degrees Fahrenheit. The planet shouldn't be also too far from the star, so as not to turn into an icy desert like Uranus and Neptune. The star is also very significant. Astronomers have concluded that the planets that are outside the solar system, so-called exoplanets, are more likely to appear near young high-metallicity stars, which contain elements heavier than helium and hydrogen. But it is important to maintain a balance here. The unbalanced number of elements will cause giants to appear instead of Earth-like objects, knocking the planets out of their orbits and committing other atrocities. Nearby supernovae, for example, have the potential to severely harm life on a planet. With excessive frequency, such catastrophic outbursts have the potential to sterilize an entire region of a galaxy for billions of years. After we have learned the main parameters of safe zones in which life might most likely develop, you probably have a natural question. Where are these zones located? And what do they look like? According to the available data, the galactic habitable zone is commonly believed to be an annulus-like region, located in the center of the galactic plane, and the size of this ring can vary and change. What are the dimensions of the chubby ring? According to research conducted in 2004 by Lineweaver, the Goldilocks zone across the Milky Way is located at a distance of 4 to 10 kiloparsecs from the galactic center. 
other researchers cite data from 2.5 to 15 kiloparsecs. But these are not the final figures, since many factors influence the narrowing or expansion of the favorable sector, including unpredictable cosmic catastrophes that inevitably shake the black spaces of the macrocosm. Why is the study of space habitable zones so important? First of all, this study can provide answers to two most important questions for mankind. Does life on other planets exist? Are there Earth-like planets that someday in the future may become a new home for Earthlings? These questions are rather complex because everything related to space is quite fragile and subject to its own laws. For example, supernova explosions we have talked about are dangerous for existing planets, but at the same time they help to create new ones. Their waves spread heavy elements throughout the universe, creating new stars and planets on their orbit. You see how complex and subtle everything is. It's bad if there are no supernovae emitting their apocalyptic gamma-ray bursts, because no new space objects will appear. It's also bad if supernova activity is too high, because any potential life on nearby planets will be destroyed. The abundance of such nuances and subtleties, which is quite numerous, gave rise to the so-called rare Earth hypothesis. This is the very end of the answer to one of the age-old questions that Earthlings have been asking since they first began to explore space. Why hasn't a single trace of extraterrestrial life been found in the universe, which is many billions of years old? Are we really alone in the universe? The rare Earth hypothesis tells us that, yes, we are. The creation of the Earth in the form which allowed the first life to originate, evolve and take intelligent forms, is a chain of such unique accidents that it is unlikely that something like this can happen again, just according to the theory of probability. We will analyze in detail this interesting but slightly pessimistic theory in the other videos. But for now, let's just say that it has been criticized a lot. And moreover, a large number of exoplanets that were discovered in the Goldilocks zone proves that we may be just not unique at all. What did the scientists manage to find? On March 6, 2009, Kepler, a NASA astronomical satellite designed specifically to search for exoplanets like our Earth, was launched. The satellite was equipped with a super-sensitive photometer and was created specifically for this purpose. It was designed for 3.5 years of operation, but worked a little longer, failing only on May 12, 2013. Kepler has managed to serve mankind a lot by transferring sensational data to scientists, so over the years of work, it managed to discover more than 3.5 thousand potential planets, which more than a thousand of them have been confirmed by various scientific groups. Moreover, some of these planets are as big as the Earth. Who knows what we'll be able to find on such planets if we fly to them on a research mission? Perhaps extraterrestrial dinosaurs, or maybe people who haven't yet reached the level of space exploration. What do you think? Can numerous extraterrestrial civilizations exist within the Milky Way simply not paying attention to Earthlings? Or they have not yet reached a sufficient level of development to contact us? Can we make such predictions based on the theory of the galactic habitable zone? What do you think about the fact that we can really be alone in the universe? Write your opinion in the comment section, subscribe to the updates, give us likes, and wait for new and interesting videos.